In this example, we want to discuss something called Russell's Paradox, and it is stated as follows. Let S be the set that contains a set X if the set X does not belong to itself. Okay, and so in, in our set builder notation, the set S consists of all sets X such that X is not a member of itself. It is not a member of itself. And we are asked to show that this is this definition right here is a paradox. In other words, this can't happen, right? And so we're asked to do it in two steps, right? So number one, we are supposed to suppose, so suppose that S is an element of itself, right? So suppose that S is a member of itself. And we want to show that this leads to a contradiction. Well, first of all, if S is a member of itself, then S cannot belong. So if, so let's look at this, right? So if S is a member of itself, then by definition, right? By definition, what, what's got to be true? Well, look at this definition, right? The set S contains all members, all sets S, X in this case, right? Where X is not contained in itself, right? And so then by definition, S is actually not in its own set, right? Because how can you see this? Well, you just go back up here and you replace all these X's by S's, right? So S, S, not in S. Well, this, this is not obeyed, right? Because S is, a, is assumed to be a subset of itself. All right, so therefore, uh, this cannot happen, right? So S cannot be a subset of itself. So then we go to number two. Well, we just showed that if S is a member of itself, everything breaks down, right? The whole, the whole situation breaks down if we assume that S is a member of itself. So now what we do is we suppose that S is not a member of itself, okay? And then we go back and think about this definition again, right? If S is not a member of itself, what does the definition tell us? Right? So since this is true, then this actually obeys the definition of the set S, right? So this obeys the definition of S right here, right? S is not a member of itself. It obeys that definition. So what do you conclude? Well, if S is the set of all sets that, that are not contained within themselves, right, that are not members of themselves, then actually, if, if this is the assumption that S is not a member of itself, then actually, what do we conclude, right? In this case, we conclude that actually, S must be a member of itself, all right? That's a contradiction, again. So this is another contradiction. It contradicts the original assumption, right? So we make the assumption that S is not a member of itself, and we conclude that it is a member of itself. Up here, we did the opposite, right? And so all together what this means, these are the only two possibilities, right? Either S is a member of itself or S is not a member of itself. Um, and so what we conclude then is that S cannot be defined as it was. And, and the key here, actually, we're not going to get into this this semester, but it's a very interesting fact. The key here is that S, whatever this S is, if you define something this way, um, it actually can't be a set, okay? So it, it can, it, you can define something something that obeys this property, but it can't be a set, because the second you call it a set, uh, it has to obey the rules of the sets that you've built it with, right? Um, but it clearly doesn't do that. We just showed that, that uh, by these two very simple observations, it doesn't do that. And so this is called Russell's Paradox. All right, so this is Russell's Paradox. And it's interesting the things that can and cannot happen uh, when you start playing with logic and the definitions of sets and stuff like this. So there's, there's one paradox that I think you'll find very interesting.